Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call to order the October 19th, 2016 meeting of the Frederick County Planning Commission. Would you join us in a moment of silence, please? Thank you. Uh, there are no uh, changes to the agenda. Madam Chair, I move for adoption. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Um, committee reports. I believe we have <laughs> one from Mr. Moan from Yes, Comp Madam Plan. Chair. The yes. Complaint Committee uh, met last week and we reviewed and endorsed uh, some revisions to the 2035 Comp Plan update uh, that have been completed by staff. So that will be coming forward, I think, to the full commission for discussion shortly. Yes, thank you very much. And Mr. Unger, the Sanitation Authority. Yes, ma'am, we met last night. Uh, uh, the oper operation report, the total customer base for the water is 14,863. Sanitary is 14,372. Rainfall for the past month was 5.3 inches, which was up considerably. Yeah, the previous month was 2.3, which was a little low, but it wasn't too bad. Uh, for pr producing water for this month, we got 1.8 million gallon a day from the Deal plant. We got 2 million gallon a day from the Anderson plant. We purchased 2.4 million gallon a day from the city with sure. a daily average of about 6.1 million gallon per day. And the average for the year is just right at 6 million gallon a day. Or, uh, the deal plant, the elevation stayed almost exactly the same. The Anderson plant was down a little bit, but they've got about 80 foot of elevation to play with there. And they're not real concerned about that. It's still, still doing real well. For uh, water loss this month, we had about 11%. And what... Uh, the sanitation is dealing with right now there we have a couple places in the county that's running close on having the maximum amount of water they can unless we do something about it as far as flow is concerned uh, down at lake frederick for instance uh, they've just about built to the capacity for the water usage and we've got to do something about that and what they're talking about is the local facility charge and what that'll be is we'll probably have to go down there. We've already drilled a well down there for water usage and we'll have to put a plan in to take care of chlorine and that and sanitizing it. And plus we'll have to put a tank up down there, probably a half million gallon tank down there to take care of that part of it too. So within the next month, they're gonna have a meeting about that and public hearing and talk about maybe putting a charge on something like that that's so they can go ahead and build that for that area like that and other places that would need something so we'll be hearing about that soon also thank you thank you very much um i am happy to welcome cat thank you hi from the uh, excuse me <laughs> the city of winchester planning commission cat eaton thank you uh quick updates it was moved on September 20th that the Planning Commission forward to City Council recommending approval of Fairmont North Loudoun Corridor Enhancement District with the recommendation to exclude underground utilities. And it is on its way for its second reading with City Council. In our last meeting, October 18th yesterday with the Planning Commission, we passed a CUP request for a 100 foot monopole tower and telecommunications facility at 501 West Jubal Early Drive. We also passed a CUP request for a private museum at 705 South Loudoun, which is zoned residential business district. We passed a request to rezone a 0.11 acre property at the northeast corner of West Cork Street and Lee Street to medium density residential district as it had been prior to, prior to that conditional health services district rezoning. We were quite glad to be able to move something back to a residential zoning in that case. We also passed a request for a CUP to convert the ground floor non-residential use to residential use at 914 South Braddock Street, which is zoned Central Business District. 
And lastly, we passed a hearing delay as requested by the applicant to convert the existing Relax Inn Motel to an extended stay lodging. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. being with us. Uh, let's see, Mr. Blaine Dunn from the uh, County Board of Supervisors. Madam Chairman. Sure. The Board of Supervisors had no public hearings. They did have a minor revision which did not require a public hearing on a uh, rezoning 081616. And on the issue of the amendments to the CUP, um, the board recommended that um, you study the letter property only. That's uh, number 116. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. This is the time on the agenda. If there's anyone in the audience who'd like to speak to us regarding an uh, idea or an issue, um, other than our public hearings, which will come along, this is the time to do it. Anyone? All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Our first item is a public hearing. It's a conditional use permit 12-16 for Alma Carter and Ronald Carter, submitted for an off-premise uh, farm market. The property is located at 131 Gainesboro Road, Winchester, and is identified with the property identification number 29-A-63 in the Gainesboro Magisterial District. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the Planning Commission. Uh, this property currently is uh, zoned RA or rural areas, and its uh, use is residential. The properties uh, surrounding um, the, where there's proposed uses is also zoned RA or rural areas. Other land uses, residential and vacant, uh, respectively. Let me turn your attention to the map on your left to kind of give you an idea where this property is located. As usual, uh, it's outlined in black. I know if you come down 522 or go on Gainesville Road, you kind of don't see how deep, deep it is, but it is a pretty deep property uh, for where this uh, activity is going to take place. The Frederick County Zoning Ordinance allows for the off premise uh, farm markets in the RP Zoning District with an approved conditional use permit. Now, the difference from a, a regular farm market and off-premise, since we don't see many of them, is, is what it means off-premise. In other words, the applicant is not growing anything on the um, property as of yet, and I'm gonna let her explain to that a little later. Uh, so it allows the uh, produce and farm items to come to this location. So we don't see uh, we don't see many of those, just so we understand where we're at. And again, it's it allows the resale of uh, fresh food uh, fruits and vegetables, uh, horticultural products, livestock, and a space that may be indoor or outdoor. Uh, the applicant uh, proposes to use the existing barn on the property. Um, there's also a uh, farmhouse that's being used currently right now in some outbuildings uh, for this uh, farm market facility. I'm going to turn your attention one more time, if I can, uh, can um, to the left here. I'm just going to kind of give you an overview picture. Uh, there's the barn, there's the property. Uh, sort of an aerial photograph what we're, what we're looking at. I know that most of you, the members, have gone out and have probably seen her born uh, there off of uh, Gainesboro Road. The, uh, the ultimate configuration of the site, including parking and uh, business sign, will be determined by an uh, illustrious sketch uh, plan. Again, we're not we're going to look for a condition uh, with this conditional use permit. We're going to stick with the illustrious sketch plan instead of a full uh, engineered site plan. But the applicant has indicated they would like to have at least uh, 10 employees to staff the farm market. However, staff knows the number of employees permitted on site will be determined by the type of the uh, well and sewage disposal system approved by the health department. Um, the new, any new signage, of course, will be limited to one Fremont-style uh, monument sign, not to exceed 50 square feet in area and five feet in size. Uh, however, um, it, I just want to point out to one of the conditions. We get to condition uh, number three. I'll, I'll explain a little bit more in depth for you have an understanding. Uh, should the Planning Commission approve this uh, or find this use to be appropriate, staff would uh, recommend the following conditions. Number one, all review agency comments shall be complied with at all times. Number two, an illustrative sketch plan shall be submitted to and approved by Frederick County with all improvements completed prior to establishment of the use. Number three, prior to the establishment of the use, an OSE OSE packet shall be uh, submitted to and approved by the uh, French County Health Department and for well and sewage disposal that will be utilized on the property for the farm market. They currently obviously have a drain fill for the house there, with this being more of an intensive use. Staff felt, and I hope that if the Planning Commission uh, feels that, that it's appropriate, we'll get that packet at the same time we're getting the illustrious sketch. So the sketch plan will show the parking layout, 
the layout of the business, but we'll also have some comfort level with having the drain field for this market already uh, looked at by the health department and approved. Uh, number four, again, there will be no uh, non-illuminated uh, freestanding business sign um, that with this condition of use permit, be no more than five feet in height and no more than 50 square feet in area. The hours of operations should be limited, uh, number five, the hours of operations should be limited from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. seven days a week. The applicant is okay with the, that condition. Uh, and finally, any expansion or change you should require a new conditional use permit. Uh, with that, Madam Chair, uh, Ms. Carter is here to answer any questions you may have on this uh, off-premise farm market and staff is available to answer any questions. Thank you. Yes, any questions from Mr. Chairman at this point? Yes, Mr. Oates. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if we were to pass this tonight and the board ultimately passes it, however, it turns out the land doesn't perk for the uh, mm. uh, drain field. Does that mean they still have a CEP lingering out there for perpetuity, even though they can't utilize it? We, uh, it would because we approve the conditional use, but I think with one of your conditions to meet all reviewing agency comments for it to move forward, I, it, it would probably just die, Mr. Oates, to be honest with you. Well, they'd have the CEP. They just couldn't implement it. Right. Thank you. Anyone else? Ms. Carter, would you give us your name, please, in Magisterial District? Uh, yes. Uh, my name is Alma Carter. I'm in the Gainsborough District, and I usually go by Libby. Mm -hmm. Libby. Yeah. Yes. Um, what do you just want me to say some stuff about would what we propose to do? Just describe what yeah. you're hoping to do. Yes. Yeah, we're hoping to put a, a farm market there that we think would really be a positive addition to the community. We want to make it a part of the community. Um, our one hope is we have an elementary school there and we have a middle school there. I know uh, teaching in the school system that a lot of the elementary schools, I'm actually at a high school, but a lot of the elementary schools, they take students out to farm markets and things for trips. So that's another way we hope to become a part of the Gainsborough community, community there by maybe doing some networking <laughs> with the schools and things for, with the students. Um, we hope to sell Virginia products there um, and network with some local people, also network with some Amish uh, connections we have. So that's one of our, our goals there is to bring uh, good products into the market that you know, will enhance um, the area, you know. So far, we've gotten positive comments from our neighbors. They actually like that we're, uh, we put up a nice barn there initially, and they like that, you know, they think it's a positive comment, uh, uh, construction there in the community. Yes. Mm -hmm. Would you uh, tell us what you're hoping to raise? Uh, Mark Sharon said that you had plans to grow things yourselves. Actually, we, we do have about seven and a half acres there. Mm -hmm. uh, so we actually do hope to perhaps use some of that to uh, grow some uh, produce there. And uh, we actually have some additional land elsewhere in Frederick County. And we... Uh, if we get this approved, hope to use that to uh, supplement also. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Any questions of Ms. Carter? Thank you. Okay, is that it? Yeah, that's okay. it. Thanks. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a, a public hearing. Would anyone in the audience like to speak uh, to this conditional use permit? Anyone at all? Well, seeing none, we will close the public hearing. Any comments by the commissioners? I, we know that certainly where it is in the Gainesboro. Any any comments at all from those folks? Uh, Madam Chairman, I, I made a visit out to the uh, uh, site on Friday, talked to the applicants there. They built a beautiful, it's a wonderful layout. Uh, and I, I was a little concerned about the entrance coming in, but uh, that'll all be mitigated, I believe, when they do their illustrative sketch plan. The one question I would have on that, I have nothing, no problem with this. With the illustrative sketch plan, is that something that can be performed by the applicant, Mark, or does that have to be an outside agency have to? Get Typically, it? we work with the applicant on that, okay. and so then don't have any more undue cost to put onto that. Okay, good. I have no. It's a it's a great facility. I think it'll be great great use for that community out there. So I have no problem with it. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Same feelings. Uh, just a question, I guess, or maybe a concern that Gary brought up. 
if, and I'm sure it probably will, if it wouldn't, couldn't get a, per, a percolation on for a drain field, should we put that in the notes as not issuing a conditional use permit? Because I don't know why you'd want it hanging out there if we can't, if we can't use it. And I certainly want it to be to happen. I just there's no point in issuing a conditional use permit if we can't make it work. Actually, I think a way maybe to do that one would just be put a time limit on it. Say they have a year to get the perk site, and if they can't get it, then the CUP dies. Otherwise, if they do get one, it's in effect in perpetuity. Well, but if they don't get a perk site, there's other ways to take care of it. Uh, well, no, if they can't get approval from the health department, they can. I know, but if well, they get approval. Well, whether it's a perk site or what, yeah. if they don't get a health department approval. Yeah, if they don't get health department, I would rather see it worded that way than say a perk site. Because yeah, that, that's fine. I didn't hear that comment. Well, we wouldn't want to just specifically say perk site. They, they just need health department approval. For something. Yes. For something. Now, is, is what Mr. Oates said something that might be fair? In other words, give you a year? Are we allowed to put sunset clauses on conditional mm -hmm. use permits? Uh, we have, uh, we did on one conditional use permit that we did up on uh, Bethel, the uh, church road was for an auto repair. Um, they wanted to put an alternative system in. We did give them a time. That we did uh, put a condition on there that they had time to do that. If they didn't meet that time, the conditional use permit died. I think on, in this case, and however the planning commission, obviously, it's, if you want to put something on there, I would caution, though, there's different types of uh, yeah. systems that they can get out there. Let's say the carters can't, for whatever reason, cannot do that or can't afford it, and they want to sell the property. Mm -hmm. sell as part of the conditional use permit, a new owner comes in and wants to can get in a turn to site or something out there, they would have to come back in front of us again. If you have a conditional use permit, if you decide not to put an extra condition to make it go away or a time limit, which you, you, you may do, um, it may hurt the, the applicant in the sense that, let's say they can't make it happen, but someone else can, they want to come in front of a farm market, as long as they follow our conditions that are set by, this, by the Board of Supervisors, ultimately, they could sell it as a farm market. Uh, yeah, just for thought. But if, if within a year's time they get a permit to do That's a drain bullshit. field and a well, you know, whatever it costs, and they decide they can't afford it and want to sell it, they can still, they will have a conditional use permit if they got a permit to do that. You're, you're saying that you, you're correct in a way, Mr. Ong, but you're also putting a clause on there may push it to a year. I, I mean, we've done it before, so we're, you know, safe ground there, but... Again, it's unusual. But well, if a year is not enough time to get a permit, we can put whatever time it takes. I would think it would be, but I think a month would do it. Question, Mark. Question. Mm -hmm. They own the house beside the new building. Does it have a conventional septic system yes, in it? Sir. Septic and yes, sir. Droughts. Mark, another question, <coughs> if I might, Oops. Madam Chair. Um, as far as the conditional use permit, is it uh, with the land, with the property? It would transfer with the property as we have it set now. Yes, we, we have never it. changed that. That to is my correct. Knowledge. As we okay. have it now, yes, sir. Okay, thanks. <coughs> Mr. Oates. Uh, the only reason I brought up the drain field is typically whenever we get these in front of us, there's already a drain field associated with the project. Whereas this case, they haven't gotten one yet, and they may or may not get one. Uh, depending on how the ground perks. Obviously, they have a perk site or a drain field there now for the house, but that may have been constructed in the 60s or 70s and just grandfathered in. Uh, again, I, I hope they get the perk site. I think it's a good project, good for the area. It's just my concern would be if they can't get one, we've got a CUP hanging out there for perpetuity that can never be utilized. I think they can get one if they want to pay the amount that it costs for the different type of the drain field. Uh, no, the ground dictates that, not the money. Mr. Chair, do you have something to say? I'm not an advocate for either, either way how the commission wants to go. I do want to remind the commission, though, when we looked at the white post flea market, 
They had to get everything there. It took them time to do it. There was no conditions on her other than they had to do a site plan. Remember, they had to get a new drain field, new uh, restroom facilities to make them ADA to get running. So uh, we've, we've done it in the past. The you know, condition you should permit, I agree that, that if, however you want to put anything on it, if you want to put that condition, that's fine. But just, we have in the past gone both ways. May I ask maybe what's a silly question, but how does one of these these things die? You say, well, it just dies. How does that happen? It, it would, what I meant die, a uh, uh, little clarify, that, yeah, they just couldn't operate it. They couldn't open it up tomorrow without those conditions being met. So one of these conditions couldn't be met, and that means there is no conditional use permit. That's correct. Okay. Well, no, the permit's still there. They just can't use it. Okay. Thank you. Oh. My only comment regarding this is I, I don't think it's that big of a deal if there's a conditional use permit that's issued and for some reason they can't use it because they can't meet a condition. Really, that means the conditions worked and they didn't establish a use that couldn't be supported on the property. So I'm comfortable with it moving forward. I mean, they're assuming the risk, you know, that they'll make the investment in investigating it and if it works. If it works, it works, and if it doesn't, we don't have a farm market, so yeah. I'm comfortable with it. Is there anything else we need to say about this? If not, how about the folks from Gainesboro? I've said all I think I need to say, so I'm prepared to make the motion to approve number 12-16 for Mr. and Mrs. Carter for a new farm market in Gainesboro. Second. Any other comments? Okay, Ms. Dronger. Dronger, yes. Marston, yes. Ambrogi, yes. Daniel, yes. Karin, yes. Oates, yes. Thomas, yes. Bolden, yes. Kenny, yes. Triplet, yes. And Dunlap, yes. Moon, yes. And the chair votes, yes. This will go to the Board of Supervisors on November the 9th. Thank you. Okay. Did you lose okay. Um, our next item is also a public hearing. It is rezoning 11-16 uh, for Southern Hills, submitted by Greenway Engineering to rezone 37.79 acres from RP Residential Performance District to RP Residential Performance District with revised proffers, and 2.56 acres from B2 General Business to B2 General Business District with revised proffers. The property is located on the east side of Town Run, uh, Town Run uh, Lane Route uh, 1012, approximately uh, 0.6 miles south of the intersection with Fairfax Pike Route 277 and Town Run Lane in the Magisterial, excuse me, in the Apecan Magisterial District and is identified by property identification number 85D-1-195. Mrs. Perkins. Thank you, Madam Chairman, members of the commission. <clears throat> this is an application to revise the proffers from rezoning 22 of 2006 for 40 acres of that. As you stated, a little over 37 is RP, about two and a half is B2, to allow for the construction of up to 130 single family detached units on the RP section of the property. Now, the 2006 rezoning allowed for the construction of up to 232 single-family attached units, which are townhouses. So therefore, this request would change the housing type from townhouses back to single-family detached and would decrease the units by 102. If I can direct you to the screen on your left, the subject property is outlined in black. You have town, town run lane along the frontage. The subject property is here which is phase two. You have phase one of the existing development located at the bottom of the stream and then the commercial portion at the top. <clears throat> now I would note that since this rezoning request was submitted after July 1, the specifically attributable proffer policy applies to this property. As you know, aware, um, back at, uh, in the summer, the Code of Virginia now requires residential proffers to be specifically attributable to the impacts generated by the development. So with this application, the applicant submitted an analysis, which is in your package, titled Residential Development Attributable Impacts, demonstrating how they believe their proffers could be specifically attributable to their impacts. 
Now, the staff report prepared by staff outlined a number of concerns regarding the analysis and how the monetary proffers were uh, attributable to the development. Uh, some of the things staff pointed out were the Clearbrook Park figures as well as the additional 304,000 that was proffered. Now, a note since the staff report went out and at your, uh, at your seats, there's a revised proffer statement that addresses those concerns. It removes the Clearbrook portion as well as the extra 304 that couldn't be tied back to the development. So with that revised proffer, uh, the applicant has addressed the comments outlined in the report. So tonight, following the public hearing, staff is seeking a recommendation from the commission to forward to the board. I'll be glad to take questions. And Mr. Evan Wyatt is here on behalf of the application. Thank you. Questions, Mrs. Perkins? Don't see any. Mr. Wyatt? Thank you, Madam Chairman, members of the commission. I'm Evan Wyatt of Greenway Engineering, uh, representing the rezoning request this evening. Um, for those of you that may not be as familiar uh, with the Southern Hills project, of course it has been around for a while. Um, the project was originally approved for single family homes throughout the entire balance of the property you see there. In 2006, there was a rezoning application that was submitted to the county, and what it did was it changed the middle portion of the property that's in yellow uh, from single family homes to townhouses, as Candace said, and then there was a commercial uh, component right here that was approved. Along with that, um, there was an additional transportation proffer added, which uh, called out for a 100 foot right-of-way corridor through here and that was to set up the cadence to relocate South Warrior Drive in the future should the Stevens City exit exit 307 be able to be shifted uh, southerly about a mile from where it currently is um, so where we are this evening <clears throat> the uh, group that we are representing has acquired the area that Candace has shown in the black and what we have done uh, is we've put together a proffer which basically takes 232 townhouses off the table and proposes a maximum of 130 single family. Um, so what that means, of course, is there's a reduction in impact for transportation, for water and sewer, for school generation, et cetera. Um, and then the other thing uh, that was important with this, the applicants wanted to acquire the 2.5 acre portion right here so they could control that piece of the property for the right of way. And there have been two deeds that have been put to record uh, that have reservations of that right of way that's available to the county and or VDOT at any point in time over the next, I think it's 89 years. And all they have to do is request it in writing and it automatically goes from a reservation to a dedication. Um, the reason there's two deeds is because the property we're talking about stops at this location, but then there's a piece right here that's part of the open space associated with the first section uh, that would have been, if you will, a spite strip if it hadn't been resolved. So all that's been taken care of. Um, so I just wanted to give you <clears throat> kind of a history of the project. Um, as far as the attributable impacts, as Candace said, we had put together the document. Um, the transportation attributable impacts were uh, addressed through the development of what's there today. Uh, everything that had been previously proffered has been improved, installed. The only remaining piece, once again, is what was reserved. Um, the other items that were within the attributable impacts document, uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have of those. As Candace mentioned, uh, this is all kind of new to all of us. So uh, what we have put together apparently uh, needed uh, to make sure to be compliant with the recently adopted legislation uh, needed a little tweak and we did that. Uh, we were able to get that into staff yesterday. And uh, so hopefully it's straightforward enough. It's, it's really a monetary evaluation change and that's about it. Um, so with all that said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Questions, Mr. Wyatt. The wastewater treatment pond there, Evan, is there any odor comes out of that? Um, well, for our property, are you referring to the pump station or are you talking about the previous lagoon? Previous lagoon. Uh, 
the times I've been out there, I have not. Um, some some of you that might be more familiar with the the area might have a better insight. Um, but there is a clause in the proffer uh, that requires disclosure to future lot purchasers about the proximity of that facility and a couple other things such as the Ewing Family Cemetery. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Thomas. The, the proffer amount, the $830,000 that is in the revised proffers, uh, that was totally voluntary? That's correct. It was, uh, it was calculated, once again, uh, based on the attributable impacts, uh, where you really have to take a really finite look at this piece in and of itself, and specifically what facilities are utilized, and then which of those in which voluntary monetary proffers are provided would then go, of course, for the capital facilities impact. So it's, like I said, it's, an interesting process now. Uh, the development impact model, of course, was a much easier path to follow, but that was a more global application. And unfortunately, that's just not where we are today. One last question. The B2 property, there's no intent to build anything on that? No, it, uh, it's once again, there's two deeds that were put to record this calendar year. Uh, staff has copies of both of them. It's very simply a reservation of the 100 foot right of way throughout the entire section of phase one and two. Uh, and it's available to Frederick County and or VDOT. All they have to do is say we want it and then the deed is processed and turned over. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else for Mr. Wyatt? Thank you, sir. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak to this uh, rezoning? Anyone at all? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Would the um, would anyone else in the applicants array want to say anything? Is there any? Okey doke. All right. Well, questions. Well, I, uh, sir, I said about all my questions. <laughs> You're allowed. <laughs> You're allowed. <laughs> oh dear. Does anybody have any questions with what has happened with this application at all? Yes. Just one, and maybe it's for Candace. Uh, with, I don't know the exact number, with roughly 100 homes, what's the normal proffer for, for a house? Is it like 15,000? <clears throat> referring to the previous development impact model figures? Yes. Mm -hmm. Single family detached was in the 18 range. That's correct. It's at about the $18,000 range. 18, 19 previously. So at this point, we're a little less than half. And we're at 8,700. 8, you can't ask me to do math in my head. <laughs> well, it's, written, it's written right here, is what I'm looking at. It would be the 830,000 divi divided by 130. That would be your per unit cost. But, but remember, this was originally rezoned back in 2005. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. in, yeah, with the 2006 rezoning, the townhouses, it was 232 townhouses. It equated to a little over 4,000 a unit. Mm -hmm. But your drop, that was based on a, a total proffer of a little over 1.1 million. So now you're go, dropping the units, dropping the impacts. Candace, while you're up there. When did you re receive the revised proffers? Uh, yes, yesterday. So you received them on the 18th. <clears throat> Does that put us in a bit of a dilemma since our bylaws say we have to have the revised proffers a minimum of 14 days in advance? I'm going to defer that to Mr. Reddy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Of course, your bylaws do yes. give you the ability to table an application and a variety of reasons, one of them being if the proffers are provided uh, less than 14 days before the meeting. It gives you the ability to do so, does not necessarily mean that you have to. So depending on the information you've heard this evening, uh, it's the, the discretion of the Planning Commission. So we can vote on it. We could pass it forward this evening. You could. And your bylaws also give you the ability to table it should you so choose. 
Any comments about that? Any comments? Well, I'll go ahead and uh, speak my mind on it. I, I don't like to get proffers this close to the uh, uh, meeting date. Uh, in this case, the only thing that's changed in the revised proffers is lowering the monetary amount to what was directly attributable to the development. There's no other changes in the proffers. Uh, though that's a significant change, I don't see it as that big of a significant change that planning commission members can't, couldn't digest that, reach a conclusion, and vote on it tonight. I mean, my, my preference would be to, you know, with that as the only change would be to just go ahead and have a vote to either move it forward or not, or move it forward with a up or down recommendation tonight and not table it. Because to table it with just that small detail kind of seems fruitless to me. But I see some heads nodding. I would agree. Yeah, I agree with that. So I'm nodding my head. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if everybody agrees, then I'll go ahead and make a motion to recommend <coughs> approval of rezoning 11-16 Southern Hills Phase 2, the revised proffers as included in the October 13th revised proffer statement. Second. Second. Is there a second? Second. All righty. Any other comments? Mr. Moan? Moan, yes. Dunlap, yes. Triplett, yes. Kenny, <clears throat> yes. Molden, yes. Thomas, yes. Oates, yes. Brian, yes. Manuel, yes. Ambrogi, yes. Marston, yes. Agree, yes. And the chair votes yes. This also will go to the Board of Supervisors on November the 9th. Thank you. Thank All righty. Our next item is a uh, information and discussion item for the commission and its indoor recreation in the M1 district discussion on revisions to the zoning ordinance to include indoor recreation as a conditional use in the M1 light industrial zoning district. Mrs. Perkins. Again, thank you. As you stated, this is an amendment to the zoning ordinance to allow indoor uh, commercial recreation as a conditional use in the M1, which is our light industrial district. Currently, this use is permitted by right in the B2, Business General, and B3 Industrial Transition Districts. So with the amendment, along with proposing to allow it as a conditional use, we've also drafted some supplementary use regulations that correspond to the use, such as uh, parking regulations and requirements for pickup areas. And I would note that if this were to be passed, additional requirements could be placed on the conditional use permit through that public process. So the DRC discussed this back at their September meeting, and it was sent to the Planning Commission for review. So tonight we are seeking comments from the commission to forward to the board on this proposed addition. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Questions of Mrs. Perkins? Uh, yeah, uh, Candace, at the meeting, I thought we'd added in OM as well as M1. You are correct. I will add that for the board. Anyone else? What would you like to tell the board through Mrs. Perkins? <laughs> it makes sense. It's good. I think that we've been moving towards this, uh, and I'm in favor of it. Uh, I think that uh, there's some use out there in the M1 that can be utilized in off hours. Uh, there's a lot of uh, need for large areas for practice of sports, uh, the development of our youth leagues and what have you, and that's what seems to be pushing a lot of this. So I'm, I'm in favor of this moving forward. And, uh, and I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think we see this about every four or five years. And each time the board back <laughs> now, we get 2000, it 2009. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just keeps getting better and better, can it? I think this is an economic decision because the M1 land is more valuable than being used as a recreation, but if it's not being used at all, you might as well use it for something. Mm -hmm. There's more options. Okay. Is that it? Thank you. And let's see. Our last item, pardon me, I'm all stuck here, um, is a minor uh, site plan threshold it's discussion on revisions to the zoning ordinance to increase the disturbed area permissible to be considered for a minor site plan from 5,000 square feet to 10,000 square feet. Mrs. Perkins, again. Thank you. <clears throat> this is a very minor uh, revision to the zoning ordinance, uh, really just to change the threshold for the submission of minor site plans versus uh, full-blown site plans. 
Currently, the ordinance uh, states that a minor site plan cannot increase the existing structure by 20% or less and does not exceed 5,000 square feet of disturbed area. So what this proposes to do is to keep that 20% but bump up that 5,000 to 10,000 to be consistent with the land disturbance permit requirements. So just a very small number tweak. So the DRC again discussed this back at their September meeting and afford it to the commission for discussion. So again, we're seeking comments to forward to the board. Okay, again, asking for comments. It's a good change. Makes sense. Great, <laughs> <laughs> okay. that's a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you, Mrs. Bergens. Okay, I think we're at the end of our agenda. I will share with you that in fact we are meeting on uh, November the 2nd. Is that correct? That's correct, Madam Chairman. Then we have scheduled the 2035 conference plan update. November 2nd. Thank you. All righty. Um, Move for adjournment. Two, 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 two. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. Thank you all very much.